Hey guys, CB Super. So if you haven't already heard, Boris FX just released Particle Illusion, which is a free standalone application for creating particle effects. In order to download it, you just go to borisfx.com, go into products and particle illusion, and then you're gonna have to sign up. So you're gonna need a email and a phone and your real name or whatever. Once you get into their system, it's absolutely free. You don't have to give them any credit card information or anything like that. It's not a free trial that's gonna try and charge you later like the container Continuum program, it's 100% free and it's standalone. So it'll work with any visual effects or editing program. So we can bring these effects from the particle illusion system and we can use them inside of DaVinci Resolve. And I'll show you how to do that. So first thing you gotta do is come to Boris FX, download this. I'm not gonna bore you with how to download it. It's pretty self-explanatory. And to be honest, if I'm able to download it, you guys should all be able to figure this out. So once you download it, you go ahead and start up Boris FX. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. It doesn't take too long to load. My computer is not the fastest computer in the world. As you can see, that took about, I don't know, 10 seconds to load. So this is very important. Once you download the program, this splash screen is going to pop up. And I know it looks like a crazy splash screen that you would normally just X out and move into the program, but this is a very important one. It's telling you, do you want to download over 2,500 free emitters? You want to click download. You definitely want this. A lot of these are absolutely amazing. Not all of them are. I haven't been through all 2,500 yet. I've only been through like, I don't know, maybe 50, but the ones that I have looked at are really, really good. Now, of course, there's always going to be some that are somewhat junk and kind of throw away, but you can probably find stylized uses for just about everything that's in this program. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of this for now. Let's go ahead and jump into the graphic user interface because it's actually really clean. So this first panel we have up here is a preview panel. So if I click on maybe this first smoke and fire burst, maybe I hit this little play button here and I can see exactly what I'm gonna see. That is one emitter. Tell me how cool that was. If I double click on this smoke fire bursts and I just, maybe I grab this fireworks glitter. What that's gonna do is that's gonna drop in an emitter into the center of the screen here. And you're also gonna see this inspection type window where you can change the parameters of your emitter. Now, I haven't even really dove into every single one of these, but it's pretty much your basic like trap code particular type of control that is absolutely insane. Cause did I mention this is free? So in order to preview it, let's go ahead and hit the space bar and watch it do its thing. Look at that. I mean, that's cool, right? And the best part about this is it runs really fast. Cause again, like most particle systems, they're fairly light. But I mean, if we were to put a bunch of these on the screen, yeah, it's gonna get really crazy really fast. So that's one, but let's go ahead and see what happens when we start clicking around in this screen, we start adding even more particles. And notice how they're actually like dropping down and the smoke is going up. So they have two different types of forces that are going on there. And again, absolutely free and it runs fairly fast. Now, of course, we could start adding in even more. Keep in mind that whenever you add these in, especially if you're doing what I just did and you're letting the timeline play while you're doing Doing that so if I'm at 60 frames deep and I go ahead and add this particle effect that's going to add it at frame 60 so before frame 60 it's not going to exist so just keep in mind if you do that you know you can kind of get like a, a neat look by uh, having them come on at their own times now it's definitely different than how we do things inside of fusion but that's not to say it's worse it's just a different workflow so it's actually kind of therapeutic and fun so play around with it now let's go ahead and click on this spark smoke. Look at that, that's pretty cool looking. Let's go ahead and add some of those in here as well while it's playing, just to see what it does. It's interesting, I mean, you definitely are gonna wanna play around with this. The nice thing about it is that it runs pretty fast for, I mean, this probably would have already set my computer on fire if I was doing this in Fusion. So look at that, look at that, that's just insane. I could see this being used quite a bit in motion graphics, definitely have a lot of uses in visual effects. The possibilities of this is absolutely endless. I'm gonna go ahead and start a new project. I'm not gonna save that because that was mostly garbage, but let's go ahead and take a look at this. Oh, this is cool. So this is new meteor. Wow, that's really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and just double click this and hit the play button and see what I'm getting. So that's pretty cool. It's a meteor, but it doesn't really look like a meteor. It just looks like maybe the meteor would be coming at me, but let's go ahead and move this around. I'm gonna come back to the very beginning of the frame and I'm just gonna pull this meteor up. Oh, I actually just created another one. I don't wanna create another one. So you gotta grab the actual emitter. I'm gonna bring it up maybe to the top left-hand side of the screen here. And I'm actually going to animate it. 
Now to animate it, you have to toggle it into animation mode. So this little key indicating keyframe is where you're gonna go ahead and toggle it into an animation mode. All I did is left click it and it turned red. And now I'm going to drop down a keyframe using this little add keyframe button. I haven't even figured out the hotkeys yet. I assume they're hotkeys. Hopefully I'll be able to have a more thorough in-depth review of this a little bit later. But right now, this is almost like a reaction video because I'm pretty much doing this as we go. I have played around with it for about the last 30 minutes. And so far, I'm absolutely blown away. So let's come maybe to the end of this. And now I'm just going to bring this down. You can see that it drops down this motion path. Now I'm just going to add another keyframe at the end. And then I'm going to come back to the beginning of the simulation. I'm just going to press play. And look at that. That is like, that's very reminiscent of like trap code. That's pretty cool. And this was free. I didn't have to buy this. Um, so one thing I'm noticing is that this dies off a little quick. So, you know, that's definitely an indication that it is absolutely particle driven, but maybe if we play around with some of this, like we give it some more life length, maybe. So what that's going to do is that's going to make sure all of the particles live longer. Maybe we'll give it even more. And look at that. I did that and it's playing it's playing almost at real time still, and now the particles are living longer, so they're dissipating over time, which is way more realistic than for it to, you know, just die off at a certain length. All right, so that's really cool, and the neat thing about this is that you can actually come in here and you can composite it over a checkerboard to see what it'll look like on checkerboard. So this is nice when you want to see what it's going to look like on, say, a lighter background, or to see what's transparent and what's not. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the composite over black for now, and of course there is a ton of of different customizable features on here. I don't even know what half of these do yet. I'm gonna have to play around with it and I encourage you guys to play around with it too. But I wanna show you how to take this meteor and stick it into DaVinci Resolve. Let's go ahead and jump over to the render section real quick. This is the Boris FX renderer. So obviously, where are you gonna output this to? I'm gonna go ahead and output to my desktop for now, and I'm just gonna call it Meteor. Check out these presets. You have 422, which is the normal preset. That's just going to give you video footage, which this will be video footage. But check this out down here. We can do ProRes Quad 4 and either pre-multiplied or straight alpha. I'm gonna go ahead and click on straight alpha. That's going to combine it with an alpha channel. So it's gonna have alpha channel information that we can use and go into fusion so that it will already have its own transparency. We won't have to use like a screen mode or some kind of additive mode to you know superimpose it on top of our footage. It's already gonna have a mask that's cut out. So resolution 1920 by 1080 will be the default. But look at this, 4K and 8K, geez. If, can you imagine if I outputted this to 8K? I'm on the free version of Fusion and DaVinci Resolve. I can't even view 8K. It would look, I don't even know, that my computer would look like this meteor would just catch on fire. But that is really cool that you can output to 8K. That's just insane. So of course you can also do a custom width and height. So that's pretty cool if you're doing like a vertical video, maybe for Instagram or something like that. I can see that this is probably gonna be used a lot for making really interesting Instagram videos so RGB plus straight alpha you can do some force motion blur I'm not gonna do that for right now I'm just gonna do the Apple ProRes encoder and I'm gonna leave all of these settings the way that they are and I'm just going to start render oh that's weird it already exists yeah it's because I've done this like 12 times I'm not gonna lie it's been really hard to get through this because every time I jump into particle illusion I find something new and it blows my mind and I have to include it into the video. So it renders really fast. If you remember that this is a particle system that is rendering, it's actually not too bad. That's probably my least favorite part is that, that insanely ridiculous rendering complete noise. All right, let's go ahead and jump into DaVinci Resolve now. I already have some stock footage that's up here and now I'm just going to right click. And I'm going to import the, some media and I'm just going to import the meteor here. If I scrub over it, we can see oh, that looks pretty cool. I'm just gonna grab this and drop it directly onto my footage. And let's butt this up and take a look at it. So right away, I can see that there is definitely some compositing issues here. We are definitely gonna wanna come in here and play with the compositing, but that's not really what we're gonna be doing today in this video. This is playing as video footage. Oh God, watch out for that meteor. Ah. Oh, that is just so cool. So cool, and look how fast that's playing. Again, because it's video footage. I brought it in as video footage, but it already has transparency. Look at that, I'm in the normal mode. I don't even have to change the modes. Let's jump into Fusion real quick, and I'll show you that 
over here on the right, we can see that it already has transparency. And if I click on the alpha, we can see what the alpha is actually doing. That is just awesome that I don't have to do anything. It already has its own alpha built in. Normally, if we were bringing in any kind of footage, we would have had to have you know, figured out a way to make an alpha either using a bitmap node and maybe some a color corrector to you know, brighten up the, the brights and the darks in order to get a really nice matte. We don't have to do any of that. It comes with a mat. Now I can immediately get in here and I can just start color correcting. And because I already have the alpha, I can already do a, let's say I come in here, shift space, I bring in a color correction node. In order to work on this, I can just click on the pre-divide post multiply so I'm not violating you know, any of the rules of compositing. This is insane. This is like this is like a really big deal. And I hope you guys are excited about this because this is blowing my mind. So this is just one effect. There is 2,500 different emitters in here and you can bring each and every one of those into your projects. Let's take a look at this one here. Look at that. I mean, the color, you know, like it comes with its own colors, but we can use the alpha to recolor this. We can map different colors to it. I mean, there's just so many different things. You can actually, you actually have a lot of customization inside of this particle illusion program as well. So there's one more thing that I thought was really cool. It's this force. So you can go ahead and add a force to the stage. Let's say I put it right here. You'll notice that it's pushing that. Maybe I'll take this and I'll just expand it a little bit more. And then let's go ahead and bring this back. Now when I press play, check this out. It starts to hit that force and it starts to push it. Look how it's pushing all that smoke to the right. Oh, tell me that is not cool. That is so, so cool that you can do that inside of this free program. I mean, it's not quite like Houdini levels, right? But it's definitely really cool that I can do this inside of this other program and then render it out and I can bring it into, you could, you could bring this into Movie Maker if you wanted to. You don't have to use DaVinci Resolve. So if you guys want to show off some of your visual effects work, head on over to the DaVinci Resolve Community Discord. Link will be down in the description below. And just drop anything that you build into this Share Your Work. I'll take a look at it. Some of the other guys will take a look at it. It's a really good place to, you know, just drop your work and get some constructive feedback. I hope you guys got something out of this. I think that this Particle Illusion standalone system is going to be super big. It's going to be really, really powerful. And I think that it pairs really nicely with DaVinci Resolve. If you guys liked this video, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thank you.